Hello students, welcome to your science class. In the past few classes, we have learned chapter 12, Electricity and Circuits of your NCERT science textbook. In today's class, we are going to have a quick revision of the entire chapter. We are going to have a small brief up of what is electricity and circuits. Let's begin with the meaning and definition. What is electricity? Electricity is a type of energy that we use to make heat, light and power to work machines, electric, electrical appliances, electronic devices, etc. What is a circuit? A circuit is a closed path that allows electricity to flow from one point to another and in this process it results in working of any electrical device attached with the circuit. Let us recall the uses and purposes of electricity. Mostly we use electricity to pump the groundwater to the surface or to rooftop tank if it in case it is any building. Electricity plays a key role in hospitals, at homes and also in use of electric cars, mobile phones etc which made transport and communication easier and to reach the destination in lesser time. Electricity made life easier and able to work during nights or after sunset. Electricity to any place is provided or supplied to different places from the power station of that area. But it is not evenly distributed to all the places at all times. In such conditions, we use a torchlight or a flashlight. Because a torchlight is an electrical device which has a bulb in it that lights up when it is switched on. Electricity to the torch bulb or to any portable electrical devices like alarm clock, radio etc. is provided by the electric cell. The design of an electric cell is it has a small metal cap on one side and a metal disc on the other side. All electric cells and devices have two terminals, a positive one and a negative one. In an electric cell, the positive terminal is at the metal cap and the negative terminal is at the metal disc. Electricity in an electric cell is produced from chemicals stored in it. We usually replace the electric cells in any electric device timely because the chemicals which are present in an electric cell which produce electricity are used up. Coming to the design of a torch bulb, it has an outer case of glass which is fixed on a metal metallic base. A thin wire fixed to the middle of the glass bulb is called the filament and it is the one which usually gives off light. This filament is fixed to two thick supporting wires. One supporting wire is connected to the metal case at base of the bulb and the other supporting wire is connected to the metal tip at the center of the base of the bulb. Like we discussed, the two terminals of the bulb are, are the base of the bulb and the metal tip of the base, which are separated by insul insulators as you can see in the image. We have learned how to connect an electric cell with a bulb also. For that, we took four different electric wires with bare ends. These exposed parts of the wires are attached to the terminals of the torch bulb and an electric cell. We use insulators like tape and rubber band to fix them to the cell and the bulb.
we try to join them in different ways to bring or make it to a complete closed circuit for the bulb to glow. For the bulb to glow, a wire is connected from one terminal of the cell to one terminal of the bulb and the other terminal of the cell is connected to other terminal of the bulb. The bulb will not glow if the arrangement of the wires are not made properly as just discussed. If the two terminals of the electric cell were connected to two terminals of the bulb which make the bulb glow in its path, such arrangement is called an electric circuit. An electric circuit provides complete path for the flow of current between the two terminals of the electric cell. Usually the direction of current is from positive terminal to the negative terminal of the electric cell in a circuit. The bulb glows when the current passes through the filament of the bulb. The bulb does not glow if in case it is a fused bulb. A fused bulb means it is the break in its filament which will break the path, path of current between terminals of, of the electric cell. To make an electric circuit by yourselves, you need a torch bulb, a piece of wire, an electric cell and wires with bare ends. One end of the wire will be wrapped at base of the electric bulb and other end of wire to negative terminal of the electric cell. The tip of the torch bulb base should come in contact with the metal cap of the cell to glow. If you move away, the bulb does not glow. That means it is in the switch off position. For the same circuit, we can build an electric switch. For that, you require drawing pins, a safety pin or a paper clip made of metal, two wires, small sheet of thermocol or a wooden board and a torch bulb and an electric cell. To a thermocol, fix two drawing pins and to one drawing pin, fix it through the ring of a safety pin and see that the other end of the safety pin touches the other drawing pin fi fixed to the thermocol. Attach the wires to these drawing pins. Now to those free end wires, attach an electric cell and a torch bulb to make it a complete circuit. If you rotate the safety pin and make it touch the other end of the drawing pin, the bulb glows. That means it is in the switch on position. If you move away the safety pin, the bulb does not glow. That means it is in the switch off position. The definition of a switch is it is a simple device that either breaks the circuit or completes the circuit. The switches at our homes also work on the same principle but are of complex design. Can we use a cotton thread instead of a metal wire in a circuit? No. Because the bulb does not glow when few materials are used to test as a switch or when used in a circuit. Materials like wood, plastic, polythene, cloth, etc. do not allow the electric current to pass through them. These are insulators that do not allow electric current to pass through them. But few materials allow electric current to pass through them and these materials are called conductors of electricity. For example, metals like copper, aluminium, iron, steel, etc. Like we discussed, air also acts as an insulator. Air is not a conductor of electricity, it is an insulator. But both conductors and insulators are equally important for building electric circuits. 
as we are discussing from the beginning the human body itself is a conductor of electricity we should be we should carefully handle electric devices because electric electricity can cause injuries when pass through living objects so be very careful and cautious while experimenting with electricity that is about electricity and circuits thank you children